In this short discussion, we will examine 10 quick suggestions to help improve writing skills. This is not an all-inclusive list, but rather a brief summary of some common writing problems I've encountered over the years as a professor. Some of these are pet peeves of mine, and while I try to compartmentalize grammar and style to the portion of the grading rubric that's dedicated to these items, unfortunately, I am human and I am fallible. Um, let's face it, well-written prose may indeed score slightly higher on an individual assessment, even taking out of the picture, the grammar and style grading components. Readers are subtly influenced by the quality of the writing that they encounter, and professors are not immune to this phenomenon. Strong writing skills also indicate, in my opinion, that students are much more serious scholars, and that such students uh, put more effort into their finished papers. And let's get started. Uh, parallel structure is the idea that items in a series should match in number, in structure, and in verb tense. This is more of a stylistic convention, and technically the first example in this slide is grammatically correct, but the second sentence is much more polished. So we see here, Mary likes hiking, a refreshing swim, and to ride a bicycle. So you have three different uh, verb forms. And in the second example, Mary likes hiking, swimming, and riding a bicycle. Um, technically, this is slightly out of parallel structure in the sense that um, you have uh, single verbs for the first two examples in the second um, sentence, hiking, swimming. And then you have uh, a slightly different verb form, but at least all three of these are in, um, in the same verb form. Um, it is important to use strong verbs um, when composing your sentence. Choosing descriptive verbs can energize a writing passage. An action verb creates more drama and more emotion than a weak, non-descriptive verb. Um, so in the first sentence, he went to the island, versus the second sentence, he sailed to the island. Gives you a little bit more description how that person got to the island. In the uh, second set of sentences, the author stated Napoleon was a tyrant versus the author claimed that Napoleon was a tyrant. So as you're going through, and uh, oh, said is a common one too, I see that quite a bit, but said, stated, they're really dull, they're not very specific, and they're sort of safe verbs, but choose verbs that have some power and descriptive value to them. Related to the idea of strong descriptive verbs is uh, finding adjectives that are very specific and accurately describe um, the object that they're describing. So here are some examples of non-specific and very overused adjectives. Good, bad, big, little, huge, nice, great. Replace these with stronger adjectives that more accurately describe the object. Another consideration with adjectives, and this also applies to adverbs, is that it is easy to overuse these modifiers. They are they are much stronger when used sparingly, like uh, adding just a hint of spice to something that you are cooking. While contractions are a valid grammatical expression, they are considered to be somewhat informal in tone. Um, in general, avoid contractions in academic writing, um, except if you're using a direct quote where the original speaker or writer uses the contraction. Avoiding non-essential gender specificity is important in writing. When a writer, for example, composes something like, a professor should always tell his students about grammar, the implication is that all professors must be male or that that's the gender norm. Um, however, I'm not a fan of the, the clunky forms he, she, and his, her. To me, they get in the way of uh, a good flow in a narrative passage. Um, the solution, um, that would be the second one, the solution is the third example, and it's very simple. Just use plural nouns and neutral plural pronouns. So instead of a professor should always tell his, her students about grammar problems, 
professors should always tell their students about grammar problems solves uh, two issues at once the the gender specificity problem the non-essential gender specificity as well as the the clunkiness of that hyphenated or slashed he she his her um, one of my um, biggest beefs I call myself a radical apostrophist is uh, knowing how to use apostrophes improper use of the apostrophe is a very common problem unfortunately uh, the good news is it can be easily fixed with just a small amount of effort in short the principal uses of the apostrophe are to denote the possessive case and also to mark an omitted letter in a contraction those are the two basic forms um, so in the first set of sentences millions of Americans watch the game that's a plural it's not possessive and the second set of sentences very similar and I used to be in the pizza business so this one really jumps out at me we ordered two pizzas last night that's uh, plural it's not possessive in the third set of examples the dog ate the cat's chew toy in this example the the writer forgot the possessive nature of the cat's chew toy um, and finally the last one um, this is something that's changing. Most style guides do not recommend using the apostrophe in any pluralized form that does not have possession. Um, but I see this from time to time, even in academic writing. Um, pluralized decades should not use an apostrophe. So just spell the numbers and uh, put the S at the end of it. Um, this is uh, one of those things that jumps out at me quite a bit, especially with these two words, prejudice and bias. Um, I have many students who, who are unfamiliar with which form to use. So uh, the word prejudice and the word bias, as first written, are noun forms. So the article exhibits bias. My neighbor exhibits racial prejudice. This is actually true because my neighbor... Uh, as a as I'm looking out my window as a confederate flag so that was what was sticking in my head um, versus the adjectival form he is biased she is prejudiced um, but frequently I'll see um, um, in student writing um, when, we're, when we're discussing authors and their biases um, the, uh, the student will write something like the author is bias without the ed on the end and it's just one of those things that, you know, if, if you don't know the correct form of the word, what you're subtly telling the reader is you're using words that you don't know and not getting the context right or not getting the meaning correct. And it can really uh, subtly undermine any argument you're making. Um, this gets back to the category of pet peeves. I mentioned earlier I'm a radical apostrophist, um, but one of the most common grammatical mistakes I see is students who struggle with its versus its and uh, really there's there's two basic forms it apostrophe s is a contraction for it is or it has it s is a possessive pronoun meaning of it or belonging to it so here's some examples as a personal pronoun the dog ate its bone and ITS, it's really hot outside today. Uh, note toward the bottom, I created a small graphic. There is um, no such word as ITS apostrophe. So you can just cross that one right out of your uh, list of possible permutations of its. Uh, two quick tests. Here's a first quick test if you're unsure whether it's a, a possessive pronoun or a contraction, which one to use. If you can replace um, in your sentence with it is or it has then the word you need is it apostrophe s otherwise the word is its the other test involves plugging the word his or her into the sentence where you think one f one of the forms of its belongs if the sentence still makes grammatical sense then the word you need is its so in the first example the dog ate its bone you could use her or his, and it would uh, well it would Im imply a gender of the particular dog, but it would still make grammatical sense. 
Number two, run on sentences. Um, you know them when you see them. Uh, unfortunately, some students don't pay as much attention as they should when they're perhaps uh, excited about their writing and they, they're in a hurry to get things done, perhaps. Um, so the first sentence is an example of a run-on sentence, which lumps together two or more sentences and does not separate the sentences or independent clauses with correct punctuation. I do not recall what kind of copier it was. All I remember was that it was able to sort, staple, and print all of my pages at the same time and just one button controlled the whole process. Run-on sentence. So I've revised it. I do not recall what kind of copier it was, period. All I remember is that it was able to sort, staple, and print all of my pages at the same time, period. Just one button controlled the whole process, period. So in this case, there were three uh, independent clauses jammed together uh, to create one long, convoluted, and rather confusing sentence, which is one of the, the main issues um, with run-on sentences is that it uh, tends to get the reader very distracted, very confused. Finally, um, proofreading. There is no replacement whatsoever for good old-fashioned proofreading. In addition to reading over your own work before turning it into an instructor, I recommend getting an extra set of eyes to read your paper, especially on the, the more important papers. I mean, this could get cumbersome if you ask a friend you know, three times a week uh, to read paper after paper after paper. Uh, many times, though, we overlook our own mistakes, uh, but someone else will see the most common errors. When I was uh, when I went back to school, I used to have my one of my teenage daughters um, proofread a lot of my work because there were certain um, spelling errors and uh, maybe some clunky turns of phrase that I was prone to do early, especially early on. And I would be amazed at the things that uh, at the time she was eighth, ninth grade. Um, that she would find in my writing that I would insist or believe wholeheartedly were not there. Um, spell checkers, I, I sometimes get this uh, from students who will say, well, I, I don't know why you downgraded me for grammatical and stylistic issues. I used my spell checker. Um, so here's an example. It's a um, uh, it's almost a cliche these days, but uh, uh, you can see quite a few spelling errors here that this spell checker didn't get because... Uh, the person um, switched uh, homonyms or words that sound alike but are spelled differently um, throughout this passage. So uh, thanks for sitting in, and I hope you got something out of the uh, brief narrative here and that you are working on improving your writing skills.